And the reason we put that on there is to alleviate the stick force to the pilot from the elevator being deflected. So this is often related to what's called manual controls. which means there's a direct mechanical linkage. So in the case of the elevator, that means there's a direct mechanical linkage. So if you go to an airplane that has a mechanical control system, you move the stick or the yoke, the elevator moves. You can also walk around to the back of the plane, grab the elevator, push it up and down, and the stick moves. So these are called reversible. And so with regard to this, we talk about two different cases that are kind of the extreme cases. Free elevator or stick free that we started talking about last time where the pilot will trim the aircraft and then let go of the stick. So that means that the elevator responds to the hinge moments to the aerodynamic forces and floats and moves to where the hinge moment is zero. Because if there's a net moment, it's gonna to continue to move. So the elevator responds to the hinge moments. And then there's the stick free or fixed elevator It means the pilot holds rigidly onto the stick. And so with the elevator rigidly held, then the elevator is at like 10 degrees, it stays at 10 degrees. And we have the stability that we've been analyzing up to this point, which is stick fix stability. If the elevator is allowed to float, the trim tab set, it's at the trim setting and we're flying along and it can float, then if a gust comes along, it changes the hinge moment on the elevator and the elevator will respond to the gust in addition to the airplane. So we need to analyze both of these cases. Typically stick free stability is less than stick fixed. which means that we'll get a stick free neutral point. The neutral point we calculated currently didn't assume the elevator moved at all from its trim location. The new neutral point we'll calculate stick free, we'll find out is actually forward of the stick fixed. And so that's another point that we're gonna to have to avoid with the CG. The CG is gonna to have to be in front of that as well if we have a mechanical flight control system that responds like this. There are other ways to do flight controls other than mechanical linkage. Although most airplanes built typically have mechanical flight control systems because we know how to build them so that they operate almost 100% of the time correctly and don't break. Um, some of the other methods are fly by wire. I'm looking for the chat just to watch. Uh, fly by wire would be like what you do on a remote controlled airplane, although it's also implemented in actual passenger jets and passenger airplanes. It means that the stick is connected to servos or connected to sensors 
that measure position and then electrical current, a signal is sent to actuators at the elevator, and then those electric actuators move the elevator. So this pilot moves the stick, it senses the new position, sends a signal to the motor, and the motor gets driven to the new position. If you go back to the elevator on that type of a flight control system and you push the elevator, you're pushing the motor to a new position, but the electrical signal doesn't go back and move the stick because there's no motor at the stick, there's only a sensor. So that's called irreversible flight controls. So these have no stick-free case. They may have a trim tab because you still want to alleviate the forces on the motor, but there's no reversible thing back that would allow the elevator to float. Yeah. I really wanted it to be free, didn't I? Thank you. Was that your question as well? Yeah. Let's shift over there for the Zoomers. So I accidentally wrote free here instead of fixed for you guys. So I changed it, so it's fixed now. So examples of this are the one that I was talking about, fly by wire, contains sensors and servo motors. There's fly by light, which sounds really awesome, but it really just means that optical fibers carry the signal rather than wires. So it still has sensors and servo motors. The reason they invented this was because it's more resistant to electrical magnetic interference, especially an EMP pulse from like an, a nuclear bomb going off or something like that, or radar jamming radar trying to jam the flight control system. Uh, this is commonly used. You see this occasionally in some fighter aircraft. Um, and then there's hydraulics, which are really common in a lot of aircraft. It means that the stick is moved and it creates a hydraulic pressure in a line. And then that hydraulic pressure is amplified by a hydraulic pump that then drives essentially a motor, a hydraulic motor to drive the flight control systems. And some of the accidents you hear about, uh, like there was a, a MD-11, which used to be called a DC-10. It had an engine on the vertical tail and it blew a compressor blade and severed the hydraulic lines for the flight control system. So all of the hydraulic fluid leaked out and they lost all flight control. Um, and that was a case where, I think we'll talk about it later in this semester, um, where the pilots actually were able to fly and land the airplane with the engines only. They would use differential thrust on the engines to bank the aircraft and then use the throttle to control climb and descent. And they actually were able to sort of crash land the airplane and save a lot of lives. Um, so let's see. So those are the different kinds. Now we'll go back to analyzing the trim tab for the mechanical flight control system because those are really common. All right, so we're gonna look at the stick-free case. And in this case, the elevator 
floats to a position where the hinge moment coefficient is zero. So this is kind of like pitch trim, right? If you have a no net moment on the airplane, then it won't pitch. If you have no net moment on the hinge of the elevator, then the elevator is going to stay there. It's not going to move. Um, so we set CH equal to zero, and that's how we analyze this. What this means is we're, if the pilot is let, letting go of the stick, he's kind of flying the aircraft with the trim tab. So he sets the trim tab to a certain setting. The elevator floats to where the hinge moment is zero. And if that, hopefully that's the trim value for the elevator, but you don't know. And so he'll adjust the trim tab to move the elevator and then that pitches the airplane up and down. It's not the optimal way to control the aircraft. It's slow, there's a lag. But if you're in cruise and you do the trim slowly one way or the other, you can set it to fly the airplane. So the equation that we use to find out, well, what's going on with this is the hinge moment equation, because that's how we're specifying the hinge moment trim. So here's our math model in terms of alpha of the aircraft. There's the effect of the elevator on the hinge moment, because if the elevator is deflected, it may it will create a hinge moment to go back the other way. And then the trim tab is there to create hinge moments, so of course it's going to have an effect. And we're going to put free on this, because that's the case. We're talking about stick free, so the elevator that we end up with is this value here. We're the pilot is controlling this thing. And so the solution to this equation is the elevator that we get with the trim tab there and the angle of attack here um, as well. So if we solve for that, it's easy. So this is the elevator float position. And we simply shove everything over to the other side, put a minus sign on it, and divide by CHE delta E. So there's where the elevator gets set to by the trim tab that the pilot's controlling. And so if we look at this, we might say, well, oh, okay, the elevator's here. What's the lift and pitching moment of the airplane? Because we know changing the elevator position definitely changes the lift and the pitching moment. So we'd want to know, well, how does the trim tab floating the elevator affect the lift and the pitching moment of the airplane? So that's what we're gonna do next. So we'll take the equations for CL and CM, stick in this elevator and find out what the values are. So I need to switch to the other screen. Let me know when you guys are done writing on this one. Caught up, are we good? Yep, you're going, okay. It's fine. I'm sure there's some people in the other room that are still working as well. Mind your way. Good. All right, so our lift and pitching moment math models that we've been using all along. In fact, you're using it in the homework to trim the airplane. We'll call it CL free because it's the stick free case. This is also what we call A, remember? So I'm writing as CL alpha. There's where we're gonna put in the free elevator. 
because it's going to affect the lift. Wherever the elevator floats to, we get a different lift. So we just substitute that in there. So we get CL alpha alpha minus CL delta E. So I'm substituting from the other board. So that's our lift equation with the elevator free. So now the CL doesn't depend upon elevator because the elevator floats to wherever trim tab tells it to float to and alpha tells it to float to. So this is our new lift equation. And we look at this and we go, well, okay, here is alpha, but then there's another term that depends on alpha. And our normal process is to collect the terms that don't depend on alpha and the ones that do. So the ones that do look like this. So I grabbed that one and put it over here. Did I do that right? Delta E. Yeah, okay, we're good. And then the stuff that goes in here is everything else. In fact, we can factor out this thing. Right, so I just grabbed the other terms, this one here, and this one here. And that's our new lift model with the elevator floating free controlled by the trim tab. And so this is the new lift curve slope for the airplane. So with the stick free, we're gonna put a prime on it so it looks different. So that's the lift curve slope of the airplane with the stick free. And it changed, didn't it? Probably not by a whole lot, but it means that if we increase our angle of attack, the elevator changes in response to that. And so we get a slightly different behavior of how the airplane lift changes with angle of attack because the elevator is also doing its thing. And then this is the new CL0, or yeah, CL0 prime for the stick free case. All right, that's not a huge deal because it just changes the lift slightly because of the elevator floating. But the change on the pitching moment is a big deal because there's our stability. So we're gonna get a new CM alpha and a new CM zero. And so that new CM alpha changes the stability of the airplane. Again, because the elevator is floating in response to the gust. Gust comes along, changes the angle of attack of the airplane. CM alpha, primary stability is gonna to wanna to be pitch down, but what does the elevator do? If the elevator floats in a way that makes the airplane pitch up instead of down in response to the gust, then that changes the stability. So on the other pay board, we're gonna do that. Am I okay to switch here? As if you couldn't see that in a few minutes. All right, so here's our model for CM. This is a stick free case.
because again, we're gonna plug in the free elevator, how it floats relative to the trim tab. And so just like we did on the other board, gonna take our formula for delta E free that came from the hinge moment equation. So that's the exact same thing we did over there. We just plugged in for delta E. And then we rearrange to get our new math formula. So we grab all the stuff that does not depend upon angle of attack. Check, check, check. And we find out that the basic pitch stability has changed. So we're gonna call this CM alpha free, put a prime on it. And then this is CM zero. So it's still a straight line equation. It's just the slope has changed and the intercept has changed. And so then the question would be, well, does it change for the better or the worse? And this is the change right here. Right, there's our original stick fixed pitch stability. And we're subtracting or adding to this. So we wanna find out this thing is of course for stability is negative. Right, we want CM alpha to be negative for stability. So we need to find out whether that's a positive or a negative number. So let's look at the typical signs for these things. So CM delta E is the pitching moment due to a positive elevator deflection. So what's that? In our conventional airplane, here's the tail. There's a positive elevator. Does that create a positive or a negative pitching moment? It's nose down, right? So it's negative, right? I'm talking about the change in pitching moment of the airplane due to delta E. Straight back, no pitching moment. Pitch down, it's gonna cause nose down, which is negative. So this is a negative number here. And then these are a little harder to predict, but we'll look at, if we look at the data for most uh, horizontal tails with elevators with trim tabs, it turns out that this thing is negative and this thing is negative. And that comes from the fact that this is saying, well, what's the hinge moment due to alpha? Well, if alpha increases like that, you can see that that's gonna wanna restore back to straight, right? which is the negative direction. And the same thing with delta E is that if the elevator gets deflected down, there's gonna be a hinge moment wanting to push it back up, which is negative. So what do we got? We got minus, 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 minus. So this thing is plus, which means it adds to this negative number and makes it less stable. So that's why we need to analyze this. And it's, it's easy to look at this and say, well, crap, this is a lot more work than I really wanna do. 
you know, I've already found out, spent a lot of time finding out just the basic stability of the airplane. Let's just call it good, right? Sounds good. You build your airplane, you have it out on the ramp, your test pilot comes up and he goes, hey, I see a trim tab on this airplane. Great. It's going to make my job easier. What's the stability of the airplane with that trim tab? And you go, I don't know. That's not going to go over well, right? That makes him think, well, what else don't you know about this airplane that's fundamental? So you got to do this. you got to analyze it. It's not only to make the airplane fly better, but to make sure it's safe to fly, period. And that's what makes airplanes quite a bit harder to design and build and more expensive than cars. If something goes wrong in a car, most of the time, I mean, this is really catastrophic, you can just pull over the side of the road and stop. It's a hassle. you got to call AAA or the wrecker, and they come get you, right? Even if, like, uh, I was driving down 13th, pulled out a Cheddar's. You guys know where that is, where Freddy's, and pulled out onto 13th going east. And I see a tire rolling, just a tire with the wheel on it, rolling down the road toward me. I pulled over, it went past, and popped up on the curb and stopped. Strange, right? Across the bridge, across K96, and there's a car sitting there with no tire on the front, bumped up against the bridge abutment, you know, the, the concrete part. So that's pretty catastrophic, and yet in the car, uh, the person driving wasn't going that fast, and it probably happened fairly slowly, and they survived. Now, on the interstate, that could have been a much bigger deal, right? So with airplanes, things like this are a big deal, not just with selling the airplane, but in the safety of the airplane as well. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're about done. Um, I want to write one last equation. So obviously this is going to change the neutral point of the airplane, and we get a new formula for the stick-free neutral point. I'm not going to go through all of the algebra to do that. Your book has this formula, and we're going to essentially stick free, right, is setting this whole thing to zero to make CM alpha zero total, and then finding out the effect on the neutral point. And so this formula allows you to calculate the neutral point stick free compared to the neutral point stick fixed. And you see the normal stuff for the neutral for the neutral point in this formula. Here's the VH bar. Here's the distance from the CG to the wing body. Neutral point. Here's the area ratios and stuff like that. Um, and this is equation 2.613, page 46 in your book. And AE is equal to CL delta from appendix B. So this is, once we've done all the analysis, it's really easy to put all your airplane parameters. Notice that we've got the trim tab hinge moment stuff that goes in here, so you have to do that. But you can easily figure out where your neutral point is stick free relative to the current neutral point. And as we discovered over here, often the stick free neutral point is in front of the, the stick fixed. And so we need to make sure that the CG is in front of that as well. All right, we'll continue this more next time. The next thing we want to analyze, this is the stability, is we want to find out, well, what trim tab do you need to get the elevator to go where you want it to go? All right, so this is all just floating at some arbitrary flight condition. If we want to trim the airplane at an angle of attack of 10 degrees and an elevator of 5 degrees, what trim tab do we need to do that? So that's next.
Have a good weekend.